Gauze players and rare unicorn-like gamer women. Welcome to G-Force coverage of the 2005 Tokyo Game Show. It's like the Japanese version of E3. How yeah, astute. Who would have thought? Yeah. I'm Kevin Pereira, and next to me is the lovely, curvaceous, and stunningly beautiful co-host of X-Play, Adam Sessler. Good eye. Weaver's jet lag and death by giant irradiated and deeply subtextual Japanese monsters to come to Tokyo and bring you in-depth TGS coverage and to add some class in this otherwise Bush League affair, we have a gifted woman who speaks fluent nerd, X-Play Zone, Morgan Webb. Thank you, Adam. We're here in the heart of the ridiculously loud Nippon Convention Center where the 2005 Tokyo Game Show has been unveiling new games, adults dressed in silly costumes, and our first in-depth look at the next-gen consoles. Today we'll be checking out what's new for the PS3, the Xbox 360, and the Nintendo Revolution, which surprisingly enough may actually live up to its name. It, it, it may. But aside from Asian men in animal costumes, what else is there to see at the 2005 Tokyo Game Show? Something tells me it's next-gen. Here's your first look at TGS 2005. Over three days, these exposed concrete walls that make up the Nippon Convention Center will ricochet the deafening sounds of gamers who teeter at the precipice of a next-gen Gamora and who stand orderly in line for anything that has the word Final Fantasy. The shrinking appetite for games in Japan has recently diminished the importance of TGS. This year, though, the show is more significant than years past, as it's caught in the slipstream of the new consoles introduced at E3. If you listen closely, you can hear the salivating of interactive desire. Actually, you can't. It's way too loud in there. After the jaw-dropping videos from Sony for the PS3 at E3, Will we finally get to see the games in action so we know they're for real? Or will the finely honed taunting of our hopes continue? After E3, many people need a little more from Microsoft to get a better sense of the Xbox 360, and this is the latest opportunity. Far more games are available to play, and leaving that lasting impression for the first console out of the gate. But it's possible the biggest news might not be on the show floor. Nintendo's announcement of its new controller is their last chance to prove viability in the console arena. Add to that how Capcom will follow up on the success of Resident Evil 4 and whether or not Metal Gear Solid 4 will make a lick of sense. It's not just the land of the rising sun, it's the expo of increasing expectation. Now that we've shared our TGS hopes and sure to be broken dreams with you, let's start things off with Microsoft, the company that had the most to prove to Japanese gamers. With the launch of the Xbox 360, Bill Gates' little company hopes to stand astride the island nation of Japan like Godzilla. If Godzilla wore wire rim glasses and had a bad haircut. Oh, yeah. Right. For the record. Yeah. Now, what's Microsoft's plan for Asian domination? And actually, doesn't Asian domination sound like a fetish film? Yeah. A little bit. It does. It does a little bit. Here's our look at the latest for the Xbox 360. Well, it's just been announced that North American gamers will get their Xbox 360 on November 22nd, while Japan, well, they get their 360 degrees of sweet lovin' on December 10th, and is about 50 bucks cheaper than its American equivalent. Is that desperation I smell? Oh, I think it is. Even with the lower price, some are still claiming the console is just too expensive, so it's going to take some A-list games to really sell the Xbox 360 to Japanese consumers this holiday. Gears of War remains the most visually impressive Xbox 360 title in the pipeline. Some new footage was shown of the game actually running on Xbox 360 hardware, and it's shaping up to be quite the system seller. When it comes out, that is. You see, even though Gears of War is in the spotlight, no one's actually going to get to play the thing until 2006. Anime girls with disproportionately large chests are an important part of Japanese culture, so it's no surprise that Dead or Alive 4 is promised as a launch day release. While it wasn't playable on the show floor, we did get some hands-on time with DOA 4 behind the scenes, and we're happy to report that it's actually quite an improvement over DOA 3. A new stagger system helps cut down on abuse of the blocking and countering, and attacking downed opponents is now a bigger part of the game. One of the cornerstones of the Japanese 360 lineup is Tetsuya Mizuguchi's 99 Knights. Think Dynasty Warriors with super-powered magical attacks that can demolish hundreds of enemies at once, and you won't be too far off. 
with multiple characters to play and a pretty intricate combo system, this should be a blast for hack and slash fans. And not to mention, it's a nice way to show off just how many characters the Xbox 360 can move around at once. It's clear that Microsoft has a long, tough road ahead in Japan, especially when you consider the potential knockout punch that is Metal Gear Solid 4 on the PlayStation 3. Now, the lineup looks solid and all the right moves have been made, but the question remains. Can the Xbox 360 win over an audience that almost universally snubbed its predecessor? We'll find out on December 10th. I know a lot of people are excited about the Revolution controller, and some people are saying the PlayStation 3 looks so much better, look at their trailers, but Microsoft is the only company, to their credit, that's here with playable games on actual hardware. Yeah, but their, their console's coming out so much sooner than the other consoles, so they really had to show games to people before the console came out. And they are also catering to Japanese gamers with their Final Fantasy XI. You couldn't get near the screen. Everybody was so excited, and there's, everyone's meowing at the screen. It's very bizarre. They should just call it the Final Fantasy box. I think the one thing I've taken is, it's a fine piece of hardware. I am excited for it, but, you know, it's a loss at PGR3 and the seeming loss of Oblivion. Their launch titles are just looking weaker than I ever thought they would. Now, earlier today, while Adam and I basked in the warmth of thousands of sweaty otakus, Kevin caught up with legendary game developer Tetsuya Mizuguchi. I'm here with Tetsuya Mizuguchi, the man behind the game with the single longest line at the Xbox 360 booth here at TGS. Mr. Mizuguchi, yeah. please tell me about N399 Nights. Uh, N399 Nights. 99 Nights is an action strategy game which revolves around a large war. The theme may be war, but the main story is a drama. So you're showing off a new trailer here at TGS, and I'm seeing different characters. They look playable. I'm seeing different races, not just humans. There's some orcs. Uh, who will we actually get to control in 99 Nights? There are many different characters and races to play in the game. The plot unfolds as you play through each character's story. Some people are comparing 99 Nights to Dynasty Warriors. What makes N3 different from Dynasty Warriors? There are a few major differences in the game. We fit a lot more enemies on screen, and 99 Nights is a fantasy-based game, so magic plays a large role within the world. The game is like a mirror. One minute you're fighting, and the next minute you're switched to the point of view of your enemy, and you're fighting against the faction and ideas that you were previously a champion for. All right, let's let you know you're you are famous for really making groundbreaking music games. Some of my favorite games of all time, between Res and Space Channel Five. Now we have Luminous on the PSP. Why the change to the portable market? I think portables have changed the way we enjoy music. Look at the iPod. The relationship with games and music is important and growing. I think we can create a new style that will let us enjoy music and games. I had a chance to play E3. Uh, I can tell it, it's going to be uh, the second game that I get for my PSP aside from Luminous. I'm waiting for Res 2. And then I play E3 and I see little cubes that look like they're from Res. And I see graphics that look like they're from Res. And I'm wondering. Do you consider E3 to be more of a sequel to Luminez, a sequel to Res, or is it something entirely different? Totally different. Uh, this is a shooter, but this is not a shooting game, you know. Uh, so... Uh, Actually, that's a really good description of it. It's a, that's a very good description. I want to talk about Microsoft's strategy for Japan, because the original Xbox, the first one, didn't do so well. People seem to ignore it. And I'm curious, do you think Microsoft has a different strategy for the Japanese market? I think it's important to have a global strategy. When an American developer makes a game in a distinctly American style, and then they try to bring the game to Japan, it really won't be successful. Microsoft needs a global strategy. With the Xbox 360, a global strategy was considered, so I think this time Microsoft has a chance. Are you going somewhere? An ancient Chinese curse forces you to say. Because coming up, we have next-gen games from Sega and Capcom. And later, two consonants in one numeral spell happiness. P, S, and three. We're back on the TGS convention floor, and oh, Granny's panties, it's loud. Yeah, 
We're in Tokyo, and you aren't. But at least we'll be the only ones risking our lives to fight Gamera when the show is over. And speaking of potentially lethal situations, somebody thought it was a good idea to put a gun in a hedgehog's hand, and also to fill a city with mechs fighting for parking spaces. When people think of Sega, they think of cute little hedgehogs. It's that sort of thinking that led to communism. Sega is so much more than spiny animals, as it showed at the Tokyo Game Show. You like mechs, right? But not just any mechs. Chrome hounds. Specifically enhanced mechs with big old battlefields to play around in. These Raphael Palmero-ish tanks will continue well into the next generation. Have you ever felt the magic? I mean, really felt the magic? You can now with Feel the Magic 2 for the Nintendo DS. Twelve men fight for one woman's love the only way they know how. Through mini games. Bizarre, somewhat inappropriate mini games. In a room closed off to the regular people, Sega showed off Ryuga Gotoku, a journey through Japan's ganglands. It's violent, but with heart. Think Shenmue without the sailors. Which brings us to Sonic. Sonic creator Yuji Naka himself appeared to present a demo of the next Sonic adventure, called, strangely enough, Sonic the Hedgehog, in honor of his 15th anniversary. That should make the kids happy. Looks like Sega and Sonic are just getting better and better with age. Aren't we all, Sonic? Aren't we all? Sonic to next gen, and they have to do that, obviously, but, I mean, it's Sonic. How much better do you really need it to look? I mean, it's, it's a cartoon hedgehog. You know, I mean, the draw distance is greater, weather effects, I mean, it's, it is making the leap a little bit, but it, it's still a cartoon hedgehog. It's still Sonic. Yeah. Sonic. And it's not Billy Hatcher. <laughs> Thank, Thank the you. Lord. I think the other thing that's notable about Sega is they're doing one of the best jobs of having games that are developed for a Japanese audience and games that are being developed for an American audience. You know, while you while you have Sonic on one side, which is, of course, universal, you do have stuff like Condemned in Full Auto, full which auto. are clearly for a Western audience. And I have right. to wonder, I mean, yes, it is clearly for a Western audience, but so are many of the other games that are out there on the show floor. Where is the Full Auto? It's I know. Complete. I would have loved to have seen it. It was good fun. They should have brought it. Yeah. Anyway, but if there's one thing that can chuck everyone into silence, it's hot next gen and zombie action. Earlier today, I went in search of zombies in Capcom's 2005 TGS lineup. It's hard to imagine what Capcom could bring to the show this year that would rival last year's hit Resident Evil 4, but Capcom still has a few cards up its sleeve. Okami is back again this year, and we are amazed once again at what the White Wolf has to offer. Okami proved that there is still life left in the PlayStation 2. The Onimusha series has always been known for its beautiful graphics, and Onimusha Dawn of Dreams is no different. Switch between two characters on the fly as you slash through enemies in impressive open environments on your PS2 next year. If you think that's exciting, we haven't even gotten to the handheld lineup. Rockman Rockman is the super deformed, overexpressive remake of the original Rockman, Mega Man for the US audience. It features a construction mode that lets you build your own levels and trade them with friends on your PSP. The King of 2D Fighters returns to the PSP with Street Fighter Alpha 3 Double Upper. This updated version of the Street Fighter Alpha series features wireless multiplayer, beautiful widescreen graphics, and even a new exclusive character. Captain Blue's latest film has been stolen, and Joe is back in action, and this time he has brought his little sister Jasmine in Beautiful Joe Double Trouble for the DS. Capcom is keeping quiet about its big next-gen titles, Devil May Cry 4 and Resident Evil 5, but hopefully we won't have to wait until next TGS to find out more. Well, it's time for us to take a commercial break and battle for the sponsorship of our corporate overlords. But by the time you're done reheating that week old slice of pizza, we'll be back with the latest on Nintendo. And the latest involves the president of Nintendo explaining their revolutionary remote control in an exclusive interview. Stick around. At a distant research facility, all hell has broken loose. Now, Orders received and understood. Search and destroy. The Marines are going in. Game time. On October 21st. Don't move. 
Don't move. It won't be pretty. Holy... Doom. Sir, are you okay? Rated R. October 21st. This game is rated M for Mature. Warriors of Sparta, each of you is worth a hundred Romans! Stand firm, for our victory today will be remembered for eternity! To battle! Fighting the Roman Empire makes you a soldier. Defeating legions of men makes you a hero. But not until you face the greatest enemies of heaven and earth will you become a legend. Chosen by the gods to be the first total warrior, you are the Spartan. architecture, ancient customs, and people who dress up like freaking nut jobs. Yes, our coverage of the 2005 Tokyo Game Show continues, and let's be honest, we're here for one reason, to get a look at the next-gen consoles. And one of those consoles is Nintendo's Revolution. What is this mysterious controller Nintendo has been talking about? Is it a hybrid of every controller from the NES until now? Is it a small marmoset, or is it a nunchuck? Well, in Nintendo's case, hopefully it inflates into a life raft because they sure need one after the dismal performance of the GameCube. And after what we've seen today, honestly, this puppy might just float. In the days and weeks leading up to TGS, Nintendo fanboys and industry analysts alike were buzzed with speculation about Nintendo President Satoru Iwata's keynote address. Rumor had it that Iwata-san would unveil the much-hyped controller for the Nintendo Revolution. And unveil he has. Wait. It's a remote? Yes, at first glance, the Revolution controller looks like a glorified remote control, but it's much more than that. The control uses motion sensing technology to track your every move. Iwata did not show any gameplay of the controller in action, but their teaser trailer was filled with clips to set our imagination afire. Baseball, sword play, uh, drumming? The controller can also be tethered to a more traditional control stick forming a kind of space-age nunchuck. Imagine playing a first-person shooter, moving your character with a stick while aiming with the controller. The focus seems to be on games tailored to an audience that wouldn't normally play games. What better way to bond with your grandson than a peaceful fishing trip in your own living room? We weren't fortunate enough to get our hands in the controller, but we talked to one lucky games journalist who did. First time I actually saw it, I was very confused. But I would say, just like the Nintendo DS, you have to get your hands on it. You really have to touch it. They had Metroid Prime 2 running with the controller, and which is really weird, um, but very cool, because with the actual remote control controller, that's how you would look around, and then you know, you'd know you go forward, back, left, and right strafing uh, with the analog stick. And you know it sounds really weird at first, but it made me feel like a kid again, which is really cool. Truer words have never been spoken. We can't tell yet if the Revolution controller will live up to its name, but these clowns sure seem to like it. I think the coolest part about the Revolution controller is, is not that I want to play it or that everybody else wants to play it, it's that developers are running around TGS yes. and you literally hear them getting excited over what they can do with this new purple. And it, it takes a minute to really figure out the potential of this controller. You first, you look at it and you're like, what? What is that? It, it's a thing with a thing. And then you kind of, your mind starts to think about it and you start to think about all the exactly. things that you can do with it. I you know, like, like, like the brand new game. I thought I was going to have, I was going to sober up after first seeing it. I've gotten only more excited. Yeah. It's like a running game around. It's like, oh yeah, we can do this and we can do this and we can do this. And I just say, America, think about it for a second. It's rad. 
I, I think believe. it's really going to bring a lot of people into the game, into gaming, because they're going to see how yeah. interactive it is and how simple it is, and I think it's going to be great. And it's different. It is. I love it different. Is. And please never silver up, Adam. Just don't. He okay. won't. But you know, who cares what we think about the controller? Earlier today, G4 TV's Jeff Keighley caught up with the head of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata, to find out what the hell is going on with the revolution. Mr. Iwata, thank you so much for joining us here on G4. Thank you. Uh, now tell us a bit about uh, how you came about this design for this controller. What Nintendo really wants to do is expand the gaming population. So how can we do that? I think the biggest concern that a non-gamer may have about holding a controller is that the controller needs to be held with both hands and both thumbs need to move and react very quickly. This is very intimidating to them. So we wanted to make the game controller something like this. Something you can hold in one hand as if you were holding a remote control for your TV. Now at the uh, keynote, you demonstrated the nunchuck controller, which is an analog stick. Do you have ideas for other expansion controllers that you might have for the system? The expansion slot gives us enormous possibilities with the Revolution controller. The interesting thing is that the core, freehand controller already has the necessary functionality to control video games. The expansions will be used to realize unique gameplay. Also, the nunchuck controller will provide people with a great new sensation when playing first-person shooter games. We are also thinking about an adapter or skin for those who wish to play existing games with existing controllers and is going to work very well. You will actually insert the core unit into the skin and it will look very similar to a regular controller. Now, in your keynote, you showed the controller, but you didn't show any of the games. A lot of people are wondering how the games are actually going to look. So people are speculating that it may not be as graphically powerful as the rival systems. Is that fair to say? If you are just going to compare the spec sheets, then the Revolution may not have higher numbers than the PS3 or the 360. But the fact of the matter is that if you connect their machine and our machine to an ordinary TV set at home and compare them, I don't really think that you'll be able to see a huge difference in the graphics. Now, what is your strategy in terms of pricing? Because if the system might be less powerful graphically, there's a possibility you could charge less than the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, which are expected to be very expensive. So is it possible that the system like Revolution would come out for as low as $199? Well, it's too early for me to discuss an exact price, but I will say this. If our goal is to get the Revolution to gamers and non-gamers, then the hardware must be affordable. If we say that it will cost $400 or $500, then the non-gamers will never pay. Now, a lot of people want to know about the new Mario game for the Revolution. It's been rumored for a long time. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Is it going to be a launch title for the system? Personally, I am pushing very strongly on Mr. Miyamoto to make Mario one of the launch titles for the Revolution, and I hope that everyone is going to support him and that it will happen. <laughs> to hand it to Nintendo on this one. I haven't seen a single game for this system, but I am so excited. Yes. I am excited to collect gold coins with the flick of a wrist. No, okay, seriously. There are so many games at this year's Tokyo Game Show, it's almost impossible to cover them all, but damn it, we're gonna try. Yes, feast your bleeding eyes on this. Namco is showing its best impersonation of Formula D with Ridge Racer 6 for the Xbox 360. And this marks the first time the series has ever appeared on a Microsoft console. The playable version on the show floor is running in time attack mode, so it's just you against the clock. The game doesn't stray too far from its roots with the signature drifter die control intact. Get ready to do some 360s on your 360 when the game launches with the system this November. Playing to the inner 13-year-old in all of us, Konami's latest Bay Brawler Rumble Roses Double X for the Xbox 360. The follow-up to last year's PlayStation 2 game lets you and a friend bushwhack another tandem in Xbox Live tag team action. Mud Rasslin has inexplicably been cut for the Xbox 360, but the improved combat system and sexed up character models, well, they keep things just as dirty. Snake and crew are all in once again in Metal Gear Acid 2 for the PlayStation Portable. The game is still a card-based strategy game, so don't get too excited. But with a stylish new look, hundreds of new cards, and a nifty 3D mode, fans of the series have a lot to look forward to. In Namco's Unreal 3-powered Frame City Killer, you play as an undercover hitman named Crow. You must profile, track, and orchestrate hits on various baddies around Frame City. The goal of the game is to stop the enemies from using the newest drug on the street, Visual Acid, to kill innocent people. 
Frame City Killer will drop on the Xbox 360 later this year. Tetsuya Mizuguchi, the man behind the deviously addictive Luminous for the PSP and Meteos for the DS, is dropping some visual acid of his own with his new PSP game, Every Extend Extra, or E3 for short. Like Luminous, music is central to the gameplay, but E3 is more of an action shooter than a puzzle game. You steer a cursor around the screen, firing at enemies, and if you time your shots effectively, you can create chain combos of explosions that increase your score. The graphics in every Extend Extra make you feel like you're having a handheld hallucination, and the game has enough wacky imagery to give you a nice neon afterglow. Look for E3 to release for the PSP in 2006. The power of attorney compels you to keep watching. And when we return, there's nothing more embarrassing than a grown man dressed as an eggplant. Yep, we'll show you Japanese cosplayers in their native habitat. And later, PS2, sorry, I'm so over that. We'll be seeing what's new for the PS3. We'll be back. When you play Ultimate Spider-Man, Somebody help me! You can use your powers to protect mankind or wreak havoc and terrorize humanity. Swing through the city as Spider-Man, or storm the streets as Venom. Defend New York City against the forces of evil, or unleash your fury and crush everything in sight. Ultimate Spider-Man, rated T for Teen, available now. Welcome back to GeForce coverage of the 2005 Tokyo Game Show, where the only thing rarer than the fish are our mm, nerves. Clever. And we still have yet to track down the PS3, which up until now has eluded us like fame and the acceptance of our parents. But we will see it later in the show. But first, they've been called weirdos, they've been called freaks, and they've been called drag queens with better imaginations. But we know them as cosplayers. I mean, what would a trip to Tokyo be? without me defaming myself and putting on a ridiculous outfit. This is my story. Yeah, so they, they call this a camera. Oh, that changes everything. Yeah. You going back in there? Oh, I am so done. I've seen every single game. There's nothing left for me there. There's cosplay. Japan is full of mystery, but no greater than cosplay. I assume the costume of the Nasu or eggplant, you dumbass Americans. I searched the Tokyo game show high and low, near and far, but the cosplayers eluded me. But finally, through an act of kindness, I found them, all of them. If you want to meet people with cosplay, you got to go inside. There's loads of people cosplay. in there. Cosplay? That's what they're actually paying me for. Oh, cool. There were kittens and a bunny, Gundam seeds, these people and schoolgirls. But to become them, I had to train. Color contacts. Oh, I got mine through unprotected sex. <laughs> we are from Final Fantasy VI. See, see, yeah, that, that, that's a big one for the Americans because it's not that easy to find. Anyway, I was just telling you that. See, it's like Halloween, but really, really pervy. Semite powers activate. We're making a difference. We just don't know how. Today I've learned that there's a place that a man in an eggplant costume can feel at home and at one with others that doesn't involve a padded room. And it's right here at the Tokyo Game Show. And I hope this feeling lasts forever. <coughs> oh no!
Of course, Cosplay provides the perfect, delicate, androgynous bridge to Square Enix games. Yes, the company that added a much-needed dose of glam rock to the RPG with the seemingly endless Final Fantasy series is still a major player in the Japanese scene. So put aside those nagging gender issues and feast your eyes on this exclusive look at what Square has in store. You mean nobody else has this footage? Yes, Adam, that, that's what exclusive means. Oh. booth where the general mood is one of redemption since Final Fantasy Advent Children sold out in Japan in about two days which instantly makes it more successful than Spirits Within. Now Americans are gonna have to wait till later this year to get their hands on this spin-off of Final Fantasy 7. But we're not here to talk about movies we're here to talk about games and the cultural childhood marketing continues with Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, after a brief stint on the GBA, it returns to the PlayStation, and there are some new faces, like Johnny Depp's lovable little pirate mug, and of course, the world of Mulan. Looks like the best work Disney's done since those stuffed toys they make in China. MMORPG fans will be pleased to know that there is a playable version of Final Fantasy XI for the Xbox 360 here on the show floor. Or at least they would be pleased if they weren't too busy playing World of Warcraft right now. But this MMORPG will allow fans who hate playing in their imaginary worlds at their desks to play in their imaginary worlds on their couch. In an attempt to milk every last drop from Final Fantasy VII, Square has taken a minor character and given him his own game. Now, Vincent Valentine is a gun-toting vampire in the third-person shooter Dirge of Cerberus. Unfortunately, not much is known about the story, except that it takes place three years after Final Fantasy VII and one year after Advent Children, which means we're not going to be playing this game for a long time. Square continues to put out sequels at an alarming rate, but it feels like there's something missing. Final Fantasy XII. I mean, they have a trailer up on the big screen, but we've seen it before. You know, it's starting to feel like we may never see Final Fantasy XII. Maybe Square should put out an Amber Alert. You know what's the worst part about being here in Tokyo? Your night terrors? What? I mean, our rooms are right next to each other. And by the way, if I have to wake up at 3 a.m. by your screaming, I swear to God. No! The worst part about being here in Tokyo is that there's all these cool games that are never going to see the light of day in the States. Yes. So we spent our few moments of free time scouring TGS for those odd little gems deemed too weird or too hot for us wussy Americans. While it's a bit overshadowed by 99 Nights, Genki's Akusagami is an impressive hack and slash you won't need to buy a new system to play. This magically delicious one-man medieval army game pushes the PlayStation 2 to new limits with unprecedented numbers of enemies on screen. Just this stage alone contains over 65,000 enemies, and they're all gunning for your head. Unfortunately, as cool as it looks, there are currently no plans to bring it to the States. Acquire, developer of the Way of the Samurai games, has turned its attention to the darker side of feudal Japanese warfare with Shinobido Imashine. Loosely translated, that means Way of the Ninja. Starring amnesiac ninja badass Go, this sneak em up boasts a detailed physics system and oodles of ninja gadgets with which to torment your foes. As in Way of the Samurai, you're free to make decisions that alter the story and complete missions in a variety of ways. Again, no US release set for Way of the Ninja, but fear not! We suspect that this ninja will find a way. Finally, a game we're sure to get in the States, but we just had to mention it anyway. Forget that Maximo guy, good old Arthur is back in armor and boxers for Extreme Ghouls and Ghosts, the first brand new G&G game since the Super Nintendo days. The graphics are 3D, but the gameplay is pure classic 2D goodness as Arthur fights and double jumps his way through yet another gruelingly difficult adventure. The demo on display is a bit mushy in the control department, but with a little refinement, Extreme Ghouls and Ghosts could sell a lot of PlayStation portables to the old school gaming set. 
now, unlike us, no one has taken away your passport to ensure you don't go anywhere. So, just gonna have to trust you. But when we come back, we'll dissect the trailer for the biggest game of the show, Metal Gear Solid 4. Why, were you expecting traditional dance? Yeah. I wasn't. Me neither. Oh. And not a moment too soon. We're nearing the end of our TGS coverage, but let's just say that there's a reason the phrase saving the best for last is a cliche. And we never met a cliche we didn't like. Now, Hideo Kojima is settling for nothing less than oohs and ahs this year, and we'll gladly oblige him. The Metal Gear Solid 4 trailer begins with a bit of a tease. Could MGS4 be a first-person shooter? Well, it doesn't take long for Kojima to pull that rug out from under us. So now we know that Snake's still going to be sneaking around and picking his spots carefully. While we can't be certain, an educated Metal Gear fan will assume that this geriatric snake has the fox dye virus and needs injections to combat it. <sighs> He still has his addiction to nicotine. And Otacon still has an addiction to nagging him about it. It's obvious that MGS4 takes place well after Metal Gear Solid 2. Strangely, Snake looks to have aged a good bit more than Otacon. Could Snake be a clone? Of course, he wouldn't be Solid Snake without a utility belt full of gadgets. This time, he's got a cybernetic eye patch that scans for known threats and cheap wenches. Arr! Snake will also reportedly be able to tweak his weapons in a number of ways. The game begins with Snake being dropped into the middle of a war zone. As to who you're fighting this time, well, it depends on you. Attack one side and the other side becomes an ally. Sharp Kojima fans will note that Snake's robotic buddy is actually from one of his first games, Snatcher. With the graphics already proven to be running in real time, we can't wait to snatch this one off shelves when it ships in 2006. I thought I'd say this, but a mech with organic legs is badass. It is. I mean, it's everything about that, especially the beginning is completely badass. So I have to hand it to Kojima. The man can give us nine minutes of a trailer, and I don't know any more about the game than I did before. I mean, where's Raiden? Was that a joke from the earlier one? I, I, don't, I don't know. Who knows? Yes, the trailer was very long. I think people are going to be upset. Oh, they cut it down. But no, no we did you guys a favor. There were, there yeah. were some meandering parts. There were you letters that moved around each other. I yes. mean, there were some parts where you're like, ah. Nine it's minutes it's beautiful, but gosh. <laughs> Nine minutes of trailer, 20 seconds of action. But, um, wow, I've never liked Metal Gear Solid that much. I want to play it. And this is similar to the reaction I had when I first saw Resident Evil 4. I agree. Yeah. I have now, to say. If you're not welded into your seat in anticipation of what's coming up following this break, you either haven't been paying attention or you work for Microsoft. We gingerly approach the PS3 after this. Welcome back to G4's coverage of the 2005 Tokyo Game Show. We're here in the land of the rising sun, which is a cruel nickname to those of us who haven't been allowed to see the light of day since we got here. I don't know what you're complaining about, Morgan. I gotta be honest. The, the dull glow of TV screens, people yelling at me in languages I don't understand, men dressed as women, this is like home. What hugged you as a child? Anyway, I'm going to deliver to the viewers what they waited an hour, and we flew thousands of miles to see. Of course, I mean the PlayStation 3. So PlayStation. 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 Well, in a rare case of being dwarfed in Tokyo, I'm here with Phil Harrison from Sony Europe. Um, so since we last spoke to you at E3, how do you how, how do you now see the reaction and how it's changed over time to the PlayStation 3? Well, we're four months further on and light years further on with the game. 
All right, I can't find the PS3, but this is pretty cool. It's called the Talkman. It uses your PSP microphone and translates your voice into many different languages. Hopefully the one that will help me find the PS3. Now, we've been seeing spring 2006. Is that, is, is that now a set time period for the release of the PlayStation 3, or is it uh, subject to change? Well, you know us. If you look at our history, we don't announce the specific launch date or the price until quite close to the launch. So, Sony doesn't want to talk launch date yet, and it doesn't want anyone outside of Japan to see the few new games it showed either. The media received no new PS3 footage. So, we yanked some unused clips from the vault. Take to the <clears throat> crimson skies with Warhawk. The revival of this airborne shooter has digital flight jockeys fondling their thrusters with excitement. PlayStation. The Getaway 3 is still just a basic tech demo, but rumor has it that the visuals are running solely on the cell processor. If true, this will be one city everyone will want to visit. It wouldn't be a Sony console without a signature driving game, and Polyphony is already grinding the gears on Vision Gran Turismo. You know what to expect here, so I won't even bother. Gundam, that's a big robot. Check out the scale of Mobile Suit Gundam and tell me you aren't interested in this franchise for the first time. Even though we never got to wrap our hands around it, what about that boomerang of a button panel? What we showed at E3 was a design concept. And uh, we have got a few things that we're working on, some exciting new additions, but we'll uh, wait a little bit before we share that with the world. PlayStation? Personally, which, which game for the PS3 are you currently the most excited about? Well, I was excited about a whole bunch of things until I saw the Metal Gear Solid 4 trailer and then uh, my jaw fell open. Oh yeah, Metal Gear Solid 4 is making quite a splash in the TGS swimming pool. And it doesn't need any water wings. Honestly, it's the most gorgeous video game we've ever seen. This isn't your older brother Solid Snake. This snake is much longer in the fangs, but no less a badass. It already looked as if the codex sequences have been swapped out in favor of Snake's Cuisinart. No matter how you load it, this looks like one explosive game. So, still no playable games, price, or release date. But the PlayStation 3 is shaping up to be a beast. Oh my God! I think the two most important things I noted out of the PS3 reel was the fact that there's a great variety of games in terms of the types of gameplay you're going to have. But more interestingly, there's no RPG and all of it was action games. So I'm wondering if it really was for a Japanese audience or if it was for the, the Western press. Well, I think the criterion for the reel, first of all, was what was ready, what they sort of made presentable. And the other thing is they want to show things that are visually interesting, which is not necessarily a turn-based RPG where you move little octagons next to each other. True, true. So but dragons attacking each other are exciting. Absolutely. But they have have to compete with what Microsoft's showing off. They have to right. let people know, hey, you've seen these type of games on the 360, right. look at them on our system. Much right. prettier. That's all they're trying to do. Well, I guess you're right. At this point, I'm just going to trust that they can't physically walk away. When we get back, we'll try and make sense of all this, this, and that. All we've seen touched and stuffed in our pockets, but no one was looking. Is some of it food? No. no. A little bit? No. Welcome back to the 2005 Tokyo Game Show, an event so big it makes Monster Island look like Rhode Island. We're about ready to wrap things up. Adam, Kevin, what did you like? I, I, I think what I'm about to say is what you guys are going to say. Yes. It's, it's Schoolgirls. It's, it's the Revolution Controller. Shh. Sorry. Sorry. It's the Revolution Controller. Yes. Um, We've been screaming how there's nothing innovative in gaming, and someone has actually produced something that allows for such innovation. As you said, I see developers excited, I see press excited, I keep on coming up with ideas of how I want to use it. I've not felt this way about a gaming system. The only thing is, it's kind of like when you get that great date with a girl, and you just want to hope that she's going to call you back and something can happen. That, that, was, that was really nice. That, that was actually sweet. very nice. It was, it was a good analogy. I mean, at no. first, when you first saw the controller, you were, what? 
what is that? What are you going to do with that? And then you kind of felt the sigh of relief as everybody thought of things they could do with yeah. it and realized that it actually was a revolution. Nintendo hadn't dropped the ball. They hadn't been pulling the wool over our eyes this entire time. And it was a really great moment of the show. It really was. I believe that, that most, most of us have friends that aren't into gaming or don't understand gaming or are too intimidated by the thought of gaming. And I right. really think this is the console that's going to open the doors for those people. I'm yeah. very excited for it. I'm excited I, I, for the mini game collections that are going to be out there with like every cooking and fishing and conducting. I, I think the one thing is, is I really hope that the American audience, which tends to be so conservative in what they find to be interesting, will give themselves a moment to actually open their minds to the fact that there's something really interesting. Right. Right. What Kennedy, has me else? excited, I gotta be honest, it's mobile gaming, which is something I honestly was never excited for before this. I mean, I'm looking around, I got Luminez on my PSP, which is great, and admittedly I'm a Mizuguchi fanboy, but E3, yeah, we know. not the expo, E3, the game, the music game, is brilliant. And they're starting to really utilize all the wireless functionality. I mean, it's been pr promised, like handheld wireless game has been promised for so long and so long, and finally it's here, it's on the floor, we get to play it, you know, we get to experience all the cool things that you really get to do with it. I, I, you know, I, I guess at the end of the day, this was a good show. The other thing is, the Xbox 360 Microsoft has really made a strong showing. You, you know, you can play so many games on the show floor. The line is crazy for Final Fantasy XI. I think they're really working hard to get the Japanese gamers excited, and I think they're doing a good job. I, I, I think they finally have some momentum behind them. We're going to find out in Amsterdam in just a couple of weeks. Oh, you're going? No. Oh. Okay. You? You? No? No. It's sadly time to call it a day here at the 2005 Tokyo Game Show. Now, the V3 was like an appetizer that TGS is another slightly smaller appetizer, but it's one folded in rice and seaweed and made to look all pretty. How do they do that? Science. I, I, I don't know. Now, thank you for joining us, and thank you for waiting until after the show to calculate how many things you'll have to pawn to afford all the next-gen consoles. Look for even more TGS goodness on Attack of the Show, X-Play, and... Maybe one of those other G4 shows I hear rumors about. Okay. Thank you, and sayonara from Tokyo.